What's up guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at ways that you can add speed to your animations to make them look faster and just more exciting in general. So let's look first at the background. So we'll see that if we go into our 2D animation workspace, we can look at the different layers within our animation. And we will uh, see that it really is pretty simple. So I started by drawing just an outline of the ground and we'll zoom in here so we can get a better idea. And then I added colors to the ground with some simple uh, textures or details here, nothing really crazy, because I know that this is gonna be in the background of the shot, so I don't really wanna focus too much on this. Um, and then I just kind of had this idea of maybe like a shrine, and we're, uh, our main uh, character is kind of tackling this demon down this cliff, and there's a shrine at the bottom, so uh, I drew some pillars with a little bit of perspective, um, added their color, and then uh, I threw in a little bit of texture. Oh, we'll put it into rendered so we can see that. Threw in some texture just to kind of, uh, I don't know, add some variation. And then uh, some moss for a little bit more detail, which you can hardly really even see, but it is there. <laughs> and then finally, um, we add, I added some water uh, and some, some sunlight reflection or, I don't know, sparkles, I guess you could call it, just to add some realism. But in hindsight, you can't even really see them, so uh, it wasn't really needed. So we have the shadow um, and the shade that is kind of in the, the shade that's in the shadow to kind of add some more depth. And then I added three water elements, and you can see if I play these, they're really just, um, they're really just waves crashing on the shore and you, once again, you don't really see them, especially once the whole animation is put together. So it's not really necessary to add these details, uh, but I like to. So if we zoom back out, you'll see that this background, not a very big part of the scene, but the cliff we will add in here. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this cliff. So this is in the foreground and we'll see if we play this, that I've added some variation in the sides here, but nothing really crazy. And it doesn't really give much of an effect that the camera is moving down rapidly past this cliff face. So the first thing to do to add some speed to our animation is we'll add some uh, rock elements in the uh, scene that kind of whiz past the camera. So this is the first rock that I drew and I'll kind of go frame by frame to show uh, how I added it. So we'll see that it starts down here and uh, it's really simple. I mean, it's just kind of a, a blob to start out with. And then as it gets closer, it exponentially gets faster until it gets to the point where it's whizzing past the camera. And at this point, uh, this is where I kind of like to add some stylized blur. So you can see that the outline is kind of uh, hashed. It's not really clear. And that gives the illusion of motion blur, which makes things look like they're going faster than they really are. Um, so you can see that, especially as it gets close to the camera, it becomes very blurred um, and stretched and then it disappears. And so if we just play this through, we can see uh, it gives the effect that I want it to. And so we can go ahead and add in the other rocks and you can see how that adds to the animation. So now we have all the rocks in, let's see how it looks. So much better. Now you might be wondering how I got it to be where the rocks look so random and kind of spaced out like that and not all as one clump. And what's interesting is that the way I animate these to make it easier on myself is I actually just animate them all from, or I animate them all at the same pacing. And then I come in after and I add time modifiers, time offset modifiers, and this basically keeps the loop, uh, but shifts it so that you can have different rocks coming at different times and it gives the effect of rocks constantly coming up rather than just waves of rocks. So let's take a look at what it looks like without the time modifiers added. Okay, so I've removed all the time offset modifiers from the rocks that I've drawn in here and let's see how it looks. So you can see they all come in as um, a bunch of waves or just one wave and since the time modifier is not active, they're not looping. 
but, and that's not really what we want. We kind of want them spaced out like we saw before. So what we do here is, for example, this first, uh, let's see here, sorry. The first rock here, it has a time offset of zero, meaning that it's not offset at all actually. And so it's gonna just do the, it's gonna just loop like I, draw, I drew it and it's gonna just continue to do that um, with no changes. So that's the first one. But if we come down to say rock five, we'll see that I have a time offset on here. So what that means is that instead of starting on frame one, it's gonna start at frame four and then continue to loop from there. And so what that does is it basically offsets all the rocks so that um, their timing is just slightly different and it makes it look a lot more natural. So we'll go ahead and add these back on. So the next thing I like to do, um, and this is pretty generic for any background, but you can add what I guess would I would call speed lines. And we'll take a look at what that means. So speed lines, are quite simply just kind of lines and they follow the same pattern as the um, rocks that we saw. That's gonna start off going slowly, so you can see they're right here, going slowly and then as it, uh, as the, you know, as you fly past the cliff face, these lines kind of come up towards the camera faster and faster and then come clear past the camera. And once again, no real detail, just kind of hashed lines um, giving the illusion of motion blur. And so if we look at this, I also have a time offset modifier for the speed lines. And the speed lines, um, oh, they have a frame offset. They don't need to have a frame offset, so we'll get rid of it and because we, we just want it to start at frame one. But, uh, what's important to note here is that for all these modifiers, I have them in uh, affecting just one layer. So for instance, this one is only affecting the speed lines. Rock three only affects the layer rock three. You don't want a bunch of time offset modifiers without um, specifying what layer they're gonna influence. Otherwise you'll get a, just a jumbled mess. So with the speed lines in, we see it kind of just adds another element um, and some more perspective too. And so that finishes up what we want to add on the cliff. So next up, we are going to add in our character. Our character consists of two layers or two objects really. I, I, would, I put them as separate objects and we'll see why later. But so it's the top layer, which is just the guy and his shoulder, up to, up to his shoulder with his hair and then we have also his hand gripping, you know, this demon. And I actually uh, used a nice tip. Uh, when I was drawing this hand, I really struggle with drawing hands and some, some other anatomy like faces are really tough too and getting kind of natural poses. And so what I did is I just imported a picture of my hand. I cropped it so that it was only the hand part, I brought it in as a plane in Blender and then I literally just sketched over it and it made for what I think looks uh, like a pretty realistic, good looking hand. So um, we will see that the first thing that we want to or animate in this scene is anything that well, well should move. So in this case, the hair should move because it's uh, light, it's soft, and the wing should move because they're made of feathers. So to start off, we'll just look at the hair and as you can see, my hair really is nothing special. It's just kind of a bunch of blobs. And I, but I tried to keep some perspective with the hair here in uh, more towards the center of the screen kind of coming towards the camera. And then the hair on the edges here kind of going off screen in a diagonal fashion. And as we flip through these frames, you can see that no, um, no real change occurs. Um, it's just kind of moving them around, redrawing them. Uh, just in slightly different positions. If you, I've found that if you make them too wild or too different from frame to frame, that it actually doesn't really look right and it looks uh, too wild and you'll find that it uh, doesn't give you the effect that you want. And then just adding color in. And then the same thing, I added a time offset um, for the hair. And you can see that hair here. And once again, we didn't want any frame offset on that, that one. And it only affects outline. And here another one for hair color. And they have the same um, same frame range and everything. So then we'll take a look at uh, the bat or the demon, I guess. And the thing that we wanted to animate on this was the wings and we did it in a similar fashion. Um, so each frame you can see is more or less just kind of, well, scribbles, <laughs> but um, we just kind of move it just, just enough from frame to frame to give it the uh, illusion of random motion that air would cause as it rushes past the wings. And we can see that it uh, gives a pretty nice effect. 
and I only need to draw five five frames for this. I guess you could you could probably even do it in three, but I would say two is too few because you start to your eye can notice the repetition. Five is a pretty good number, especially if it's something like this that's pretty easy to animate. So the next thing that we want to add in here is um, noise, and I'll show you what it looks like first without noise. We'll see that the arm and the head and the hand look a little too stiff, a little too lifeless. They're just kind of rigidly um, stuck there. And so to fix that, a really easy thing to do is just add a noise modifier. Now when you add this noise modifier, um, like for example, I'll delete this and add it in here. It's going to look crazy. Where is it? Noise. It's going to look crazy because by default it's at 50% uh, and that's just way too much. Um, especially if we increase the step down to one, you'll see it goes a little too crazy. Now, maybe it's a look you're looking for. It kind of looks like out of control. So in, in some, you know, there's definitely uses for it, but I usually like to keep mine between 0 0.01 and 0 0.07. And for this one, I found 0 0.07 looks pretty good. And once again, we set that step to one so that it jitters once every frame. So then the last thing that I add to this scene is some wind blur lines. And I'm not really sure this is necessary, but it does kind of add just another element and it's something that you can kind of keep in your pocket um, whenever you're thinking about trying to add speed to an animation. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. So we can see here that the wind lines uh, follow a very, same, the, a very similar strategy to the rock animations. And that is by using, uh, splitting up all of our different lines into different layers and then using a time offset modifier that affects specifically each one of those layers. And um, this way we can kind of get the same idea of having them uh, coming at the camera at random intervals rather than all at just one burst, you know, keep coming in waves like that, which isn't very realistic. So if we uh, look at just maybe, um, one of these wind lines, for example, number one. So this one here, you can see that it uh, really is just a small line. And as time progresses in the beginning, it doesn't go very far at all. And then as it gets closer and closer to the camera, it becomes exponentially faster and then passes by. So the final thing that I like to do in my animations to add a little bit of the illusion of speed is um, adding in some noise within the position of each of the objects. And so if we come into uh, an object, we can go to the uh, animation tab. And here, we, if you, you'll probably be in the dope sheet, the dope sheet. And what we wanna do is we want to come over to the graph editor. And in the graph editor, we have the option to add modifiers. And in this case, we're gonna to wanna to add a noise modifier. So when we add this in, you can see the effect that it has. Basically, it randomly moves the object. And in this case, only we have it set on the X direction, so it's only gonna add noise in the X direction. And if you can remember way back to, gosh, I don't know, physics, algebra, <laughs> you'll remember um, amplitude and period. And those are the two main things that we want to adjust in this wave. So scale, you can see, increases the period, so the rate at which the uh, random noise oscillates. And uh, strength decreases and increases the amplitude. So if we increase it, we have a, a higher amplitude, decrease it, lower amplitude. And this will take some playing around with to kind of f see what feels natural. Sometimes you want really small but fast uh, jitters, and sometimes you want kind of more slow, wider movement. So I kind of uh, narrowed these in uh, dialed them in and got a look that I thought looked good. And this is this was the result. So we get some random movement from side to side, but we also get a little bit of movement, a little bit of jitter in that X direction from, uh, from this modifier here that has a slightly uh, smaller scale, a smaller amplitude, so or a smaller period, so it's gonna oscillate quicker. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.